Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 8th of May, now it's 15 past 10 in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update today in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Second update will be a little bit late in the afternoon on my Patreon page in which I will share additional news that will be reported by Russian media and also I will share uh, on Patreon some uh, additional video footage fr from North Seti Alanya, from Vladikavkaz, where I am uh, right now and will stay for some, uh, for some time. That's been, uh, that's been said. Uh, by the way, if I may, uh, let me remind you that this project, because I just spoke about Patreon, let me remind you that this project exists only because of uh, support from our community and uh, I will be very glad and very grateful if you will consider to support this channel by subscribing on my Patreon page because it's a uh, main lifeline for this project and uh, Patreon because it's a monthly subscription it does gives me peace of mind to be honest peace of mind uh, with some uh, additional information what kind of funds are available for uh, each month so it's uh, extremely important to me for this project so please consider joining my patreon i will be very happy to see see you there that's been said let's talk about news now and i will start with uh, I will start with Ukraine and special military operation, of course. And uh, yesterday afternoon, many of you probably did see on my Telegram channel uh, information, which I did share, that uh, late afternoon and during the night time, Zelensky's regime did uh, conduct uh, yet another wave of uh, local scale offensive or counteroffensive operations this time not in the Uglidar or not only on the Uglidar direction but also in the direction of uh, Arekhova let me show you on the map this area so this is a land bridge between Crimea and mainland Russia and as I said uh, many many times before uh, this counteroffensive that was demanded by Washington and London from Zelensky's regime will take place main part of this counteroffensive uh, will take place in the direction of Azov Sea to cut this land bridge here or at least to establish some control over the land bridge itself and then by long range artillery just shell uh, means of communication between Crimea and mainland Russia and now we are seeing exactly that I was always skeptical that Zelensky's regime will be able to pull off large-scale counteroffensive because they don't have enough manpower for that and uh, military equipment or ammunition but they are very very much capable to conduct this local scale uh, offensive operations and uh, for the last four days we are seeing exactly this kind of development and by the way Uglidar is uh, here on the right corner or eastern corner of this land bridge in Zaporozhye region and Orekhov is in the western part here and during the previous two three days main activity of Zelensky's regime was uh, in the from uh, in direction of Uglidar to establish control over the, this uh, bridgehead that is under Russian control between Uglidar and uh, Gulyai Polya. But now, yesterday afternoon, we did see activization of uh, Zelensky's regime from Arekhova direction, and this is, I guess, will be main direction. Arekhova and Gulyai Polya will be main directions that Zelensky's regime will use uh, its uh, main reserves that are concentrated in Zaporozhye uh, region right now and uh, according to Russian side reports on different sources during the night there were heavy fighting heavy fighting and uh, Zelensky's regime was using 
basically all means of destruction that they have in the inventory long range long, long range artillery long range missile systems long range missiles uh, uh, high mars mlrs multi launch rocket systems and uh, despite all this uh, firepower that was used by zelensky's regime they was they were unable to breach even the first line of defense of russian forces in this area they did had some uh, extremely low level of uh, success they did move forward for a uh, few hundred meters in some areas few kilometers in some but when it comes to overall situation zelensky's regime was unable to breach even the first line of defense and by the way first line of defense uh, never meant to be uh, main line of defense it's just a line on which uh, enemy forces should be slowed down and after that usually first line is retreating towards second line of defense and defense lines that are in between and by the way let me remind you that russian side has uh, not one not two or three and not even four defense lines in this area russian side has much more defense lines so at least for now we can uh, say as a fact that despite these um, attempts of Zelensky's regime to uh, achieve any breakthrough in any direction they had no uh, significant success they basically miserably failed and according to russian forces during the night time Zelensky's regime once again lost hundreds and hundreds of soldiers killed and wounded and uh, about 100 from 50 to 100 uh, armored personal carriers other military equipment including tanks and during the day today i guess russian defense ministry will share with us video footage of uh, night fight and you probably did notice that uh, first time i guess since beginning of special military operation russian frontline aviation especially uh, helicopter gunships actively using anti-tank guided missiles of course they did use this kind of type of missiles uh, previously but not in this scale because right now almost uh, every day we are seeing more and more video footage uh, from russian defense ministry with the active work of russian helicopter gunships uh, which are destroying tens and at this point hundreds of uh, military uh, equipment of uh, Zelensky's regime by uh, guided weaponry and I guess today we will see some additional video footage of active work of Russian frontline aviation so yes when it comes to Zaporozhye region russian defense lines are holding even first defense line is holding at this point even though as i said first level first level line of defense never meant to be a uh, main line of defense but we should always uh, we should keep in mind that zelensky's regime did not send to uh, combat its main reserves yet so even though we are seeing that hundreds and hundreds of ukrainian soldiers have been already killed thousands basically at this stage for the last four days uh, main main reserves of uh, Zelensky's regime and by the way i did say many times before that uh, in kherson and zaporozhye directions Zelensky's regime has about we can say also krivoy rog and dnipropetrovsk Zelensky's regime has about 78,000 reserves now much less because thousands of uh, soldiers from these reserves already were killed or wounded during the clashes in last uh, few days but yet again uh, tens of thousands of ukrainian soldiers are waiting orders to enter this battle so at this point it's too early to call uh, to call uh, final 
result of this battle even though me personally i'm 100 percent sure that uh, once these uh, offensive operations of Zelensky's regime will stop because uh, Ukrainian militaries will run out of steam, Ukrainian brigades that are participating in these actions. Then it will be Russian turn to conduct offensive operations and I'm, I'm quite sure Russian side will neutralize uh, all those last reserves that Zelensky's regime has for this moment and uh, that exact moment will... will uh, become a turning point or beginning of the end of Zelensky's regime and Ukrainian armed forces as a more or less battle-ready or capable entity. And by the way, let me also share with you information that uh, according to some reports that we are seeing on uh, Russian language telegram channels and also Ukrainian language telegram channels, some Ukrainian units are already refusing to obey orders here in Zaporozhye area and uh, uh, just uh, this morning I did uh, read a report that one big unit of Ukrainian armed forces were complaining that they are sent uh, on suicidal missions without, uh, without uh, cover from air and without cover even by air defense systems and in that conditions they are refusing to obey orders. So as you can see because of these extremely heavy casualties that Ukrainian side is uh, taking during the previous days we already seeing some elements of mutiny in uh, these Ukrainian groups group of forces that are as I said, last reserves of Zelensky's regime that and uh, are slow, slowly uh, built to conduct uh, this offensive operation in the direction of Azov Sea. And we are talking about brigades, majority of which was trained by Western NATO member states and uh, in the West. So situation is uh, very difficult on the front line on Zaporozhye direction but uh, yeah, its situation is extremely bad for Zelensky's regime at least for this moment that's picture that we are seeing and of course during the day will be some additional information and uh, uh, I will share all that additional information on my telegram channel and then in the second update on my patreon page let me share with you and by the way during the night Zelensky's regime uh, did shell very heavily Tokmak, this settlement here. Reports are saying that um, uh, HIMARS MLRS multi-launch rocket systems were used to conduct this shelling and Tokmak is uh, one of the main logistical uh, points of Russian side on this land bridge between Crimea and mainland Russia. So. Uh, Zelensky's regime is somehow trying to, you know, distract Russian logistics, even though they will fail 100%, because uh, once again, air defense systems of Russian Federation did work quite well, according to reports, and the majority of those missiles, uh, Ukrainian missiles, were shot down. So let me continue now. Let me continue. Despite these four days of... Uh, offensive operations, Zelensky's regime basically did manage to achieve uh, almost nothing. They may uh, establish some control over the few hundred uh, square kilometers, but uh, it, don't, it don't have a strategical meaning. And more than that, uh, in previous days, we did uh, probably all notice that uh, uh, Zelensky's regime is... Uh, taking control over the some settlements and then are unable to hold on to these uh, territories and are forced to retreat by Russian local scale offensives. So very s serious situation on the front line, very serious. And uh, yes, let's see how situation will develop in the coming hours and days. And by the way, this is Tars News Agency's uh, report, which is based on statements of, of Vladimir Rogov. 
uh, head of organization we are together with russia and this person is also as i understand official in zaporozhye region he is uh, constantly talking about zaporozhye region and situation there and according to him uh, despite attempts of Zelensky's regime to achieve any success in Zaporozhye direction, they have none of it yet, and they are taking heavy casualties. And uh, basically, at this point, we can say that uh, this uh, local-scale offensive operations of Zelensky's regime was uh, unsuccessful, failure, huge failure. And uh, let me continue. And by the way. Uh, of course, we have to talk about situation in uh, Kherson region because of this, uh, this destruction of the dump uh, two days ago on the Dnipro River. And according to information that uh, Russian media is reporting, water level, even though in some settlements water level is uh, decreasing little by little, uh, water is still high and many settlements are still flooded and tens of thousands of uh, civilians were evacuated from this area so it's a disaster zone still and uh, it will be this way at least for uh, at least for a uh, uh, few more uh, days then water will water level will decrease and um, i guess if sites will allow each other there will some uh, operations will take place by civilian uh, structures to rebuild to rebuild the uh, infrastructure so that civilians can go back to their homes but uh, yet again i don't think Zelensky's regime will um, allow this to happen because they still shelling even now in this situation they are shelling its own region and when it comes to destruction of this um, hydro kahoka hydro electro power station uh, power plant i guess at this stage uh, entire world maybe with exception of western states are 100 percent percent sure that it's Zelensky's regime uh, that to be blamed for this disaster and even though me personally i'm i'm, I'm uh, more and more uh, flying towards uh, idea that uh, this power station was uh, failed not because of strikes two days ago, but because of uh, constant strikes by Zelensky regime during the many, uh, many months before, because of which uh, construction of uh, power station was very much damaged. And maybe two days ago, it was just that critical point when uh, pressure of water from uh, Kahovka water reservoir will become just unbearable for construction and it just failed. But in any case, uh, in any case, uh, responsibility for this, uh, this disaster, ecological uh, and technological disaster, uh, is lies on uh, Zelensky's regime because it's there. It's them that were shelling this power station, and the entire world knows this. But uh, you know, in Western media, you're not gonna hear anything like that. Uh, Western elites and the Western uh, media, so-called media outlets, of course, uh, gonna blame Russia for everything. Uh, always, that's the uh, usual strategy. Let me continue now, and uh, this is also TASS News Agency's report, according to which uh, this is also about this land bridge between Crimea and Russia, and we have. Uh, statement from Vostok uh, group of forces, Russian forces, according to which uh, Russian side did not allow Zelensky's regime to achieve any breakthroughs uh, on the Zaporozhye direction, which I just uh, uh, spoke about. And uh, yes, according to this news, Zelensky's re regime has uh, in unbelievable losses but still they are putting in more and more reserves and trying to uh, gain some momentum despite these uh, incredible losses that they have and uh, as i said as i said uh, some ukrainian units are already refusing to obey orders 
because they are seeing what is happening on the front line and probably we will see that kind of developments even uh, even more and by the way let me also give you some additional information about uh, our uh, quick summary over the situation in the front line so Kherson region is a disaster zone disaster area in Zaporozhye region, this local scale offensive operations of Zelensky regime is failing miserably. Donetsk direction is also active, and Zelensky regime even tried to conduct some local scale counteroffensives in the direction of Marinka. Uh, we don't really have at this moment uh, confirmed information what kind of situation is there, but I guess Russian side is well prepared to to repeal any Ukrainian uh, counteroffensives, so uh, it's only a matter of time and this settlement eventually will become uh, under Russian control and we did had some report that Zelensky's regime simultaneously are trying to conduct some local scale offensive operations in direction of Avdevka to deblocate this town which is in operational encirclement as you can see it but yet again uh, uh, Zelensky's regime are unable to achieve any more or less significant success during this local scale offensive operations. There are some very serious de developments, very serious developments in the direction of um, Bakhmut or Artyomovsk. Uh, Ukrainian armed forces that are still loyal to Zelensky and his criminal associates are trying to conduct uh, local scale offensive operations in Bakhmut direction also they are trying to somehow encircle this city and there are uh, different reports or reports that are contradicting each other according to some reports uh, Birkhovka this town here this small uh, village uh, here is under partially under control of Zelensky's regime but According to many Russian sources, Berkhovka is under full Russian control and uh, by the way, even this pro-Ukrainian map is not acknowledging that uh, Ukrainian forces did enter uh, Berkhovka. So, I guess, uh, despite some uh, local-scale success that Zelensky's regime did had on the flanks of uh, Bakhmut or Artyomovsk, uh, at least for this moment, they have no any significant breakthroughs in this direction also and uh, of course there were some reports that heavy fighting were taking place in Seversk direction especially in in, in Belogorovka area uh, and uh, this area is uh, a gray zone for for a very long time now and it seems like because of terrain no one side is managing to establish full control over the this settlement Belogorovka and this uh, entire area here and uh, there were some um, serious uh, clashes also in direction of Liman and in direction of uh, Kupiansk but we don't have uh, we cannot say that any side did achieve any breakthroughs so they are uh, pretty much entire front line is active they are local scale offensives and counteroffensives uh, almost uh, every day, all day, but uh, we cannot say that any one side is achieving any breakthroughs for this moment. Which is for Russian side, at least it's it's uh, it's okay, because uh, it's Zelensky's regime that are conducting mainly uh, offensive operations. Uh, but still, as a matter of fact, uh, despite this. Uh, activization of the front line we we are not seeing any break breakthroughs from any side and this is Rianovosti's report which is based on statements from uh, Denis Pushilin who is head of uh, DPR Donetsk People's Republic and uh, he's he's constantly of course commenting situation on the front line and uh, this time he did said that Russian side uh, had, has to uh, establish some buffer zone or move Ukrainian forces from Russian borders at least for 500 kilometers at least for 500 kilometers which is basically uh, almost entire central and uh, southeastern parts of Ukraine and this will definitely happen this will definitely happen uh, 
you know my take on on on, on fate of ukraine so I'm quite sure after this conflict will end, at least entire southern and eastern parts of Ukraine from Kharkov to Odessa region will be under full Russian control. And maybe even Kiev and surrounding areas. While western parts of Ukraine, in my reading of big picture, and this geopolitical uh, struggle between uh, western elites and Russia, Western regions of uh, Ukraine will become under control of Western neighbors of Ukraine, mainly or namely Hungary, Poland and Romania, possibly even Slovakia. So uh, statement of pushing absolutely makes sense and the Russian side will definitely uh, move forward at least for uh, 500 kilometers from uh, current Russian borders and I guess even more I guess even more let's continue now and this is a RIA Novosti's report according to which uh, Russian uh, forces did manage to destroy radar of uh, radio locator of the German Iris T German Iris T uh, air defense systems uh, with uh, and this was done by Lancet Kamikaze drone. I did share this footage on my Telegram channel. You can see it. Uh, you can see it if you are interested. And um, and by the way, please consider to subscribe to my Telegram channel. I do share tens of uh, relevant news on the Telegram on daily basis. And um, this information is relevant because uh, this Western attitude. They are. Uh, uh, trying to uh, you know pretend that this uh, western air defense systems like patreon or R iris t are some kind of miracle we weapons that will defeat russian air force but uh, in reality uh, this extremely expensive uh, military equipment from germany this uh, rather was destroyed by uh, cheap Russian kamikaze drone so you tell me how effective or ineffective all this uh, western propaganda is first of all and then uh, these uh, air defense systems that are produced in the west they are not crap I'm not gonna say that they are crap they are capable systems but they are not definitely not some kind of game changers that's what I was trying to say uh, let me continue now. This is Ria Novosti's report, uh, according to which Zelensky's regime did destroy uh, pipeline, ammonia pipeline, Toliati Odessa, which goes from Toliati to Odessa. And I did share video footage of uh, this um, area of where pipeline was damaged on my Telegram page. You can see it. Uh, this ammonia is uh, spreading in, in 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 entire area and there and it, it, it does look quite uh, scary and according to some reports it will take about two or three days for pipelines to get empty with this gas and by the way why this is important first of all uh, you can see once again that Zelensky's regime don't care about environment, don't care about technological uh, disasters, and uh, don't care about civilians, because uh, anybody who will end up under, uh, for example, anybody that was in that area when uh, uh, Ukrainian forces strike this pipeline will most definitely lost his life because you cannot survive in, 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 in that such a condition and second of all this pipeline is uh, important this story and it happened two, a few days ago just reports that are coming coming now on me main media outlets but I did report about it two days ago on my telegram uh, page and uh, by the way this pipeline is important because uh, it's a part of this supposed to be part of grain deal and i did spoke about this pipeline of ammonia for uh, quite a few times previously 
uh, with the, you know, and about some connections that this pipeline may have or had. And now, when this pipeline is destroyed and the Russian side was demanding uh, from uh, UN to make sure that Zelensky's regime will reopen this pipeline, it will not happen now and anytime soon so now i truly don't see any reason why russian side will prolong grain deal so by destroy destroying this pipeline zelensky's regime destroyed the grain deal itself that's my take on it but yet again in months time uh, the new decision should be made about grain deal and uh, i guess moscow will refuse refuse to prolong it but let's let's wait and see this is tas news agency's report according to which putin spoke with the prince of saudi arabia who will be king and um, they have a, as i understand they have a good relationships uh, muhammad ben salman al saud that's a prince of uh, crown prince of saudi arabia and uh, they spoke about putin and uh, also did spoke about opec plus uh, organization and decisions that are made in uh, in this context to make sure that prices on oil are stable and oil, oil market is uh, stable in, in general and they also spoke about some other topics of course we're not gonna uh, hear exact topics that they spoke but what is interesting that uh, state uh, head of uh, u.s state department uh, was uh, in saudi arabia a day or two ago maybe he's still in saudi arabia so this call in my opinion does demonstrates uh, that saudi arabia don't really care no more about u.s at least that much that uh, Saudi Arabia were uh, were uh, dependent on US uh, in in previous decades. So relationships between uh, Riyadh and Washington definitely are changing, and the Saudi Arabia becoming more and more independent from uh, from US, and leaning towards Russia and and China as a states that can provide some guarantees of security so it's just clear we can see this uh, the development quite clearly at this stage and I, I guess this phone call was made exactly for this to demonstrate that uh, Saudi Arabia no longer cares about uh, Washington's position on any topic and uh, I guess we, visit of head of u.s state department in saudi arabia was a failure and this phone to phone call between uh, putin and uh, al saud is uh, at least partial confirmation of uh, what i just said that state department did fail to achieve anything in saudi arabia but they, I'm, I'm quite sure they were trying because I, I guess White House or Biden administration or US deep state are not really happy that China did manage to bring on the negotiation table Iran and Saudi Arabia. And now, by the way, both countries established diplomatic relationships. And uh, there were some reports in, in previous days that they may even uh, build up a uh, fleet together so cooperation is taking place and i guess washington is uh, very much not happy about these peaceful developments in the middle east and that's why probably head of u.s state department uh, sullivan isn't it his uh, surname did went to saudi arabia to somehow distract this uh, uh distract ties emerging ties between Saudi Arabia and, and Iran but and Saudi Arabia and Moscow or or Beijing but I guess uh, Sullivan failed which is good for uh, Middle East and which is good for uh, entire world really 
let me continue now and um, this is Ria Novosti's report which is based on uh, article in Newsweek according to which if Zelensky's regime will fail with the uh, with the current this uh, counteroffensive operations local scale counteroffensive operations that they are conducting on that land bridge between Crimea and Russia then according to Newsweek Western states will lose appetite to support Zelensky's regime uh, anymore and uh, and Kyiv will find itself in uh, hot water or in very difficult uh, situation which is uh, I mean you don't have you don't have to be genius to understand this I mean it's just logical isn't it and I did say many times before that uh, many states in the West already lost appetite to support Zelensky's regime because they are ashamed that they had to stand next to Nazis and terrorists. Man. Some of some of them uh, in Western elites, some representatives of Western elites probably do have some self-respect, at least on some level. And uh, it's clearly, I mean, it's it's clearly noticeable that some of them truly are ashamed, ashamed of themselves that they had have to stand next to Zelensky and his uh, associates, his criminal associates. And yes, the Newsweek is absolutely correct. Uh, once uh, Zelensky's regime will fail will de with this counteroffensive and they, they, they will definitely fail, uh, many Western elites will probably start openly distancing themselves from uh, from uh, current regime in Ukraine and uh, will start talking about peace. That will be their they move. They will start talking about peace. Let me continue now. And this is Artis report. Rush today is reporting that. Oh, that's uh, also very very significant. Russia is seeking to replace Nazi regime in Ukraine. Uh, uh, that was stated by. Russian security chief Nikolai Patrushev. So, yes, I mean, it's an uh, open secret, really, that uh, Russia's one of the main goals for Russia initially, really, was denazification, and uh, denazification means removal of uh, extremist elements from uh, any level of power structure. In Ukraine so it's quite um, understandable statement and reassuring statement really from Nikolai Patrushev that uh, that Russian side will uh, remain true to its uh, declared goals when it comes to uh, Ukraine so yes and by the way, uh, he also spoke about uh, Europe and said that, uh, I mean, he can probably use this not really diplomatic language, but he said that the US uh, brought to its knees EU, European Union and states of European Union during this confrontation on, on Ukraine. And US did use this confrontation to achieve this to make sure that EU is acting under orders constantly, 100%, and there is not even a single step uh, which, will, uh, which will show that uh, Brussels or any capital in the EU has any sovereignty at all. And by the way, uh, there is some exceptions. Of course, it's hard to argue with statements of uh, Patrushev. The US definitely did brought to its knees uh, European Union, at least in political terms, but also in economical terms. If, if we take into account how much EU lost, and even EU officials are saying that they lost uh, from 700 billion to a trillion euros because of this uh, sanction war and because of this... Uh, whole story around Ukraine. So yes, US did brought to its knees EU in, in economical and political terms, but there are some exceptions inside EU 
and of course I'm talking about Hungary first of all who definitely tries to act as a sovereign nation we all understand the western elites has have uh, uh, many tools to pressure Hungary and uh, eventually you know western elites are managing to achieve uh, whatever decisions they want to see from uh, from from Bucharest or Budapest sorry but but uh, you know it will be unfair if we if if we don't don't acknowledge that uh, Hungary Hungary's leadership is at least trying to act as a sovereign leaders of sovereign nation which is important but rest of the EU members are oh, come on man they don't have any sovereignty at this uh, point whatsoever uh, this is Ria Novosti's report uh, by the way uh, probably you remember how that I, I did say many many times that uh, Switzerland is no longer um, no longer neutral state at least de facto the Euro status of Switzerland is still remains as a neutral but de facto Switzerland is no longer a neutral state and world uh, no longer sees Swiss as a uh, such and we have a uh, direct confirmation of my words about it because uh, Swiss Senate made decision to allow uh, Swiss weapons and uh, spare parts to be uh, sent to Ukraine so that's direct involvement of Switzerland in the conflict on the side of one of the parties in this conflict so um, how anybody can uh, call Switzerland uh, or Swiss neutral state after these kind of statements I mean I don't know but de facto Switzerland is unfortunately no longer neutral state and by the way of course this Swiss weapons not gonna make any change any significant change on the front line but uh, once again um, these kind of decisions from Swiss leadership just highlights that they are part of this anti-Russian coalition they are part of uh, not just anti-Russian coalition but they are part of anti-human coalition because western elites are danger not just for russia they are danger for the entire world and for citizens of western states also and maybe even more than uh, to us for example you know so yes quite unfortunate development uh, you know they are making mistakes swiss elites are making mistakes but uh, you know let me continue now and this is also important also important um, information RT is reporting that former head of NATO Anders Rasmussen made statement that if Ukrainian counteroffensive will fail some NATO member states will probably enter uh, Ukraine and by the way he did not say that Ukraine will be divided but when I see this headline and his uh, words that was said by Rasmussen uh, I did uh, receive this information as uh, at least partial confirmation of my prediction that uh, once uh, once Ukrainian forces will fail, once Zelensky's regime will fail uh, with its uh, these local scale counteroffensives, and uh, then when the uh, Russian side will neutralize these last reserves of uh, Ukrainian armed forces we will see beginning of the end of uh, Zelensky's regime and we will see beginning of the end of Ukrainian armed forces uh, as a whole as a more or less capable entity and a very same moment if you remember I said many times before very same moment Poland and few other NATO member states will probably enter western regions of Ukraine because uh, they will receive a minimal opposition from Ukrainian side at that point because uh, Russia will uh, neutralize main fighting force of Ukraine and basically what Rasmussen is saying is I mean at least partial confirmation 
of my prediction, isn't it? He's also talking about uh, involvement of some NATO member states in this conflict. And then when this will happen, and I'm 100% sure this will happen, Poland, uh, Romania, maybe a few other countries, and Hungary also will enter Ukraine, but Hungary will stay only in the, uh, in Transcarpathia region, where ethnic Hungarians are living, and Hungary will definitely not participate in any hostility against Russia. That's uh, clear, 100% clear. But when it comes to Poland and Romania and possibly Slovakia, uh, question still remains, will they stay only in the western part of uh, Ukraine on territories that used to belong to those countries, Poland, Slovakia and Romania before Second World War? Or will they move it, their forces eastwards? That's the question, because if they will stay in the western regions, we will probably not see uh, large-scale clashes between Russian and uh, these NATO uh, forces that will enter uh, Ukraine. But if, uh, if uh, Warsaw and Bucharest will um, move their forces eastwards from western regions, then we will probably end up in, uh, in hot waters. We will we will may end up uh, in direct confrontation between Russia and these states. Let's hope this will not happen and uh, they will stay on the western part of Ukraine only. And Moscow won't be against this kind of development because the rest of the Ukraine will become a part of... Uh, initially will become under full Russian control and then will integrate into Russia. And this way, by full disintegration of Ukraine uh, sites will probably manage to achieve uh, peace long on, on, on long ter terms on long terms so yes uh, quite interesting statement from uh, Rasmussen uh, and uh, as I said when I see this uh, statement uh, I did take it as a partial confirmation of my prediction so this is also interesting let's talk about some other issues there's too much politics and wars and stuff like that so this is rt reporting about uh, attempt from fox news to silence tucker carlson as you know tucker carlson was um, not fired from fox he is still formally working for fox news his program was removed from air and uh, or he was removed from air and uh, according to his contract he cannot uh, make uh, some other programs but he did on a twitter and now fox news on behalf of deep state of us are acting against tucker carson i guess this fight uh, will not end in favor of fox news they already lost many millions of uh, viewers and they will continue to lose uh, support of uh, US uh, conservative public because I guess uh, conservatives in or traditionalists in US not gonna like that Fox News main media outlet that they were used to support now are trying now are trying to pressurize or pressure one of the most uh, well-known journalists in the entire world and by the way uh, after all if this is not uh, fight against uh, freedom of speech then what this is and as we know for uh, conservatives and for uh, trad traditionalists freedom of speech is one of the uh, principal issues and and they're not gonna like this uh, kind of development for sure so fox news is indeed trouble i believe yes they have contract and uh, but tucker was uh, forced to uh, break that co contract isn't it he was forced to do so and uh, society is uh, thankful to him and ratings of his uh, first show on twitter that 
and uh, this is gonna be last or oh, not the last but a few more news uh, by the way uh, we have report here that uh, relationships between uh, Russia and Cuba are uh, becoming increasingly active uh, trade and economical relationships and we have uh, information that trade for example between the, the countries did rise nine times in previous nine times but by the way 900 percent in previous uh, in previous um, uh, four months since the beginning of this year in comparison to 2022 which is uh, great news which is great news i hope uh, russia will become a major economical and uh, trade partner for uh, cuba society in cuba did deserve to have a breakthrough from this uh, constant pressure from us as you know cuba is under illegal us sanctions for decades and decades and whenever i see some information uh, that will participate uh, in, in in cuba's prosperity i'm i'm truly happy about it so yes let's hope relationships between russia and cuba will continue to become more and more friendly and both sides will benefit from it uh, yes i'm all for uh, support of cuban society because uh, as it always happens these illegal western sanctions man first of all are hurting ordinary citizens like us just ordinary citizens you know so that's why i'm very happy for for citizens of cuba that relationships are becoming even better between russia and and, and uh, cuba and hopefully hopefully in coming years coming years uh, havana will manage to deal with all the economical issues and uh, will prosper will may you know and cuba will will will, will start prosper again hopefully this will happen and and that there should be also re, re, reunification uh, i guess at some point it's not up to me of course but because of the so many cubans are living in in us in miami especially in florida sorry in miami also but uh, i mean florida is a state and the entire state is uh, um, maybe not majority are from descendants from cuba but uh, quite significant number of residents of florida this state are uh, cuban descent and hopefully sometime in future there can be some reconciliation be 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 between societies this cuban divided cuban societies in 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 cuba itself and in florida that should happen that should happen one way or another and that will be good path for uh, future prosperity of this nation let me continue now and this is gonna be last news yes uh, last news for this first update today and uh, it's about sport a uh, long time i didn't spoke didn't said anything about sport and sport event and um, we have uh, information that probably greatest um, football player or soccer player if you are uh, from us you, you are calling this uh, sport uh, soccer in in the rest of the world we are calling it football and um, and greatest one of the or maybe the greatest player football player Lionel Messi did made a decision to continue his career in the USA in Miami by the way I just spoke about Florida and Miami and uh, yeah he will continue his football career with the club Inter Miami, which is great news for uh, fans, football fans in the in the U.S. Because uh, once again, even though Messi is not in his prime, but still he's uh, he's a legend. He's a legend for God's sake, and uh, any club, any football club in this world will be happy to have him uh, in, in in the team so i congratulate all the football fans 
in Florida, especially uh, supporters of Inter Miami. Some great, great news for them. And this is this. This is it. Uh, this is it for now. I hope you will find this update interesting. And if so, please. Uh, and if so, please hit that like button. Leave some commentary about any topic you like. By the way, sorry for light. Light. Uh, I constantly do have some issues with light here. So yes, if you find this video interesting, please hit that. Um, uh, like button leave some commentary about any topic you like and uh, if you think this channel is uh, useful interesting and informative please consider to support with small donations through paypal buy me coffee or by subscribing to my patreon page you will see links under this video in the description box this is it for now have a great day and take care